Alright, once again, hello there everyone, this is Kingdom bringing you a game, this is a casted replay game I got, once again, sent to me by my friend Vamp. This is his team Odin, recently renamed from the Bus Drivers, and they're playing on the European team matchmaking server. Playing against Permilas, apparently. So, what, parts per thousand? Parts per meal? I'm liking this. And this lineup so far is looking really exciting. Odin, um, Vamp told me that their team was trying out this new strategy, and it looks pretty freaking cool so far. I like the first pick, Nature's Prophet. Gives them an aggressive overtone. And then you get Lena Chaos Knight for the Chaos Knight. Chaos Bolt Stun into Lena Stun. Strong laning presence. Invoker for the mid game. And of course this is Vamp's Invoker. And Vamp is actually an extremely good Invoker player. So we'll get to watch some pretty exciting stuff here. And then on the other side, for Mila, as we see a Shadow Demon Darkseer Lifestealer. So got the Shadow Demon Lifestealer. So got a strong combo there. And Lifestealer, of course, can do some pretty big damage to Invoker. Chaos Knight. Those kinds of heroes who are reliant on their spells to do work. Uh, Lifestealer with the Rage, of course, Magic Immunity, pretty strong in that regard. They're going to pick up a Puck now, possibly solo mid, possibly offlane. They've also got the Dark Seer for those two rules, and they can put the Dark Seer in the woods as well. Visage now picked up by Odin, so I love this draft. They've got the Visage familiar stuns, as well as the slow, as well as the big nuke. Coming out of AoE damage from a Dark Seer up in a Puck, that's going to make sure that that nuke soul assumption is going to be doing as much damage as possible maximum damage all the time and I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be a very aggressive line coming from Odin so they're gonna be Nature's Prophet on the off lane Invoker on the mid lane CK Lena Visage try that can of course be an aggressive or a defensive dry lane so a lot of options open to Odin so far and then Permila is they've got They've also got some fair amount of options. Puck and Darks here can swap off lane, mid lane roles. Either of them should be able to handle an invoker. And then they just need one more hero for their tri lane to go with that Shadow Demon Lifestealer. Possibly a jungler is an option here. But then you'd have to worry about Odin running that aggressive tri lane if you pick up a jungler. That would be like a Q word for them to just go immediately hardcore. So probably not going to get the channel of the Enchantress or the Enigma. Something more along the lines of maybe a Jakiro still in the pool, a Leshrac still in the pool. Someone with a stun, I think Disruptor might be a good choice to send back the Nature's Prophet Teleport. No, it's going to be a Sand King. So going for a little bit more of a team fight presence, vacuum into Sand King, Burrow Strike, and Epicenter is pretty freaking awesome. Especially when combined with a Dream Coil, and it's going to allow Lifestealer lots of lockdown to continue right-clicking through to the late game. So a pretty solid life pretty solid lineup here from Premier Labs. A little bit less carry potential than Odin, I would have to say. Although Lifestealer, I think, in general, is a harder carry than Chaos Knight. With, in combination with the Invoker, who stays relevant all the way through the late game, and in combination with a Nature's Prophet split push, I b do believe Odin is going to have a little bit of a better late game presence. But, uh, I can't get too, I can't get ahead of myself. This is, you have to wait and see how the landing stage shapes up, so to wait as the players pick up their heroes. Here, last one, life scooter needs to get grabbed here. It's waiting. Come on, you only got one choice, bro. Not that complicated. All tab cannot be nearly that interesting. I'm kidding. I'm being mean. Alright, we'll stop being mean now. <laughs> I mean alright, let's go ahead. Immediate pause. Apparently life stealer having some issues maybe. I don't know. We'll introduce the players though in the meantime while this pause goes through, and I will also speed it up. So it goes a little bit faster. So we have here... Lena is getting played by Shadow Demon, apparently. Oat playing the Chaos Knight. Weaver playing the Nature's Prophet. We've got Brojo Man, the Captain on the Visage, and Vamp on the Solo Mid Invoker. Alright, there's a unpause, and I have to get up to my thing to slow, back the, slow the game back down. Yeah, and game at normal speed. There we go. I mean, up on the top, we looks like we've got Moya on the Sand King, Melchior on the Shadow Demon. We've got Nav, I think that's Nav, on the Puck, Fe the Fearless on the Life Stealer, and last but not least, we will have Yabrish on the Dark Seer. I'm going to continue speeding this up as there's a lot of disconnects, a lot of pauses. So, if you want to get up to the laning stage, laning stage is where things are going to start getting interesting. Darkseer headed out towards the safe lane, so I, I guess the Dire maybe wants to do an aggressive tri lane. So, we may see tri lane versus tri lane action here, which is pretty exciting. Should get to see some pretty cool stuff. I would kind of favor the Radiant tri lane. 
in that respect. Let's go ahead. Back to normal speed. Now the game's on pause. Yeah, Darkseer headed out towards that safe lane. And uh, let's see. Look at the dire trial here. No, they're going to the safe lane. All right, that's what I thought they would do. It makes more sense. They don't have the strongest try lane. Sand King is a little bit weak in try lanes. He's squishy, and his stun has a high mana cost. He's not able to spam it like other in support heroes are. Shadow Demon's a great try lane hero, and you would have the disruption set up for the Sand King stun, followed by a life stealer slow. But, I mean, you're up against Alina Chaos Knight Visage, which is one of the strongest trilines I can imagine. More pauses. So we're going to speed through the rest of these pauses. Alright, good. Alright. Odin making sure that they get the control off on this bottom rune, on this bottom lane, as they will need to use some pulling. Visage and Alina, both very experienced heavy supports, and they'll need to get that warding going. They've dropped the ward off, so they should have control of that rune. Dire drop a ward up on top of their angle, so they should be able to manage this top pulls as well. Get the Sand King some levels and some boots. Weaver going to be jungling first, not even going into the, into the lane. He's just, I mean, he's straight up jungling too. He's just going to completely abandon the lane, apparently. But decides he doesn't need the, uh, doesn't need to contest. So he's just going to continue right-clicking down these ghosts here. He's going to try... looks like he's building for a fast Midas with that Gloves of Haste, skipping the Bazzi Ring. In the mid lane, we see Vamp against the Puck, so it will be Invoker Puck, and I believe Puck has more base damage here, but Vamp with a Blades of Attack getting up there. It's also going Exhort, so he's got more damage. I thought Vamp typically went Quas Wax, but this is just as it is. Yeah, Puck having some difficulties here. Vamp getting a lot of last hits and denies, winning by about two and then four on those regards. So, doing pretty well here. Vamp knows this hero really well. He, he said he was a little rusty and wasn't too confident on his invoker. But both both offlaners not choosing to go into their respective offlane. Darkseer takes out the quick camp twice for level two. Now that he's got, he's got the level of vacuum, not even opting for not even opting to go into the lane not taking the point of surge so he's just going to probably wait to uh, stack this and then jungle a little bit more quickly that way Yeah, see if he can get the stack off it's a little bit more complicated now that they changed the creep aggro a lot of teams are messing up this stacking it looks like he got it off yeah a couple more ursas unlucky they in the mid lane continuing to outlast it yeah, no, not really. Puck is catching up. Dodging a lot of attempted harass from Vamp. Vamp not able... Oh, Vamp getting low with the Earl Orb, but Puck's not going to be able to go in. He's only level 3, doesn't have enough nukes to bring down Vamp. Bottom lane push is going on pretty early. They've got the creep clearing power of Alina, who's got both spells up. Visa is just going to pause now for whatever reason. We're going to speed through the pause because I don't know what's going on. Crash, Invoker Froze. Alright, there we go. There we go. As we resume the game, it's going to be. Tower. Yep, tower getting pushed out. Lena using those nukes. She can, of course, both of them will only have a 90 mana cost at level one, so she's got enough mana to cast each of them twice, and which basically clears out a creep wave straight up from the beginning. Stuns it too, and that should allow this tower to go down pretty quickly. Here we're going to see the stun, dragon slave, to bring down these creeps as quickly as possible. Tower continuing to get right clicked down, and there's nothing that the D Dire can really do to stop it. Even if Darkseer rotates, he's not going to be able to shut down this push. Just Radiant are just going to wait for another creep wave and then continue to and just continue to push it out. Yep, there it goes. This tower is going to drop. Chaos Knight should hopefully get the last hit, and he's going to have. Yep, Chaos Knight last hit, and he's going to get massively quick drum up. It's going to absolutely increase his mid-game effectiveness. Mid lane as Vamp continues to... Oh no, he's out denying now, not at last hitting. Last hits are even now. Puck is caught back up. Puck, of course, some significantly better base damage there. Now up on the top lane, we do see Lifestealer farming better than the Chaos Knight. He does have more last hits, but he also doesn't have a tower, so not quite as much gold. Has basically gotten every creep so far, I think, pretty close to it. Yeah, pretty close to every creep. He's going to be able to get this siege unit now as well. Yeah, so getting some nice amount of gold up here. Should be going for an early Midas. That's typically what you do 
if you're a live stealer with free fun. Anyway, once he gets that, he is going to have a significantly higher GPM, and Chaos Knight's not going to be able to keep up in terms of flash farming. However, you do have this uh, Prophet getting extremely close to his minus. He's going to have it at five minutes. Stacking camps as well for the Chaos, for the Visage, and the Lena to use. Possibly it could also be for the Invoker to clear out. So a lot of people on his team who are able to clear out those creep stacks. Lena gets a first blood on the Darkseer, who did eventually decide to rotate into lane. Apologize for missing that. Wouldn't be a cast if I didn't, right? I was talking about farming, man. He might even go clear out that stack himself. Once his clarity gives him some more mana here. Mid lane, Vamp getting some problems. He's going to get brought down by the Puck. Puck winning this mid lane pretty hard. Going to take a couple more tower shots. Should survive. Yeah, bottles up to survive there. Gets that double damage rune, and with that, is able to win out the lane. Get a kill on Invoker, and that secures at least one lane. And then, of course, they've got the life sealer free farming. He's got his minus. Yeah, got the minus. Courier just brought it. Looks like trying to clear out a stack here, but Sand King's gonna get actually trapped. Life sealer gonna jump right in and clear out this stack. Take as much as he can using the Midas as well get plenty of gold this way and that's going to up his GPM significantly minus on him there's no, he has a minus on the profit though so it shouldn't completely imbalance the gold graph here of course this will mean that the life stealer is going to be more farm but nature's profit is an incredibly powerful hero if he's able to get that farm up see dude where did Lena go back to base I guess headed mid lane looks like there is a gamp coming mid lane for this invoker coming in behind. He's got the Shadow Demon as well. He's going to go invisible though. Do they have the invis detection? No, they don't. In fact, Shad Sand King might get low as Lena is in position. One more right click is going to do it. Tower Shot brings him down. So Lena does get the kill as well as the experience there. And now Invoker needs to back off. He's low on HP. Doesn't have a lot of levels of Quas. Taking extremely early levels into both Quas and Wex so I should have access to all of his spells. Maybe wanted that defensive Deafening Blast. Okay, so I continue to farm it out on the bottom lane now that there are three Radiant Heroes on the mid. See some rotation from Shadow Demon, probably looking to ward and or do. He doesn't have wards, I don't know what he's doing. Maybe looking to find a low HP Prophet in the jungle? I'm not entirely sure what he's trying to do here. Head towards the mid lane, I heard this whole assumption. It's going down on Puck. Puck with a haste rune, but a little bit low on HP. And with no ultimate, maybe it's with a bottle charge she can bit back up to enough to be able to take these two, but it's not going to be easy. Invoker coming back towards the lane, has the phase boots up already, so good farm up on him. Not quite enough. TP in from the Chaos Knight, this is going to be a big fight. Shadow Demon looks like he's going to fall, leaning... Lena being played by Shadow Demon as well. Reality Rift back in Sunstrike, I don't even know where that was. Oh, it was an attempt to hit the Puck, Puck dodged it, but I believe Vamp should get this kill on... Oh. Phase shift to the Ancients. TP, I believe she should get out. There's nothing. Yeah, Vamp doesn't have a cooldown on Invoke to be able to get that out. He made his best, though. And the Sand King did go down to the Cast Knight. So, overall, a positive. Good amount of kills going the way of the Radiant. And Invoker not dying a second time means a pretty good trade for them. Now, it looks like they want to push out this mid lane. They've got the Nature's Prophet throwing down the Treants to tank up the tower shots and allow this push to go down a little quicker. Guess that's going to back off. He's about to take a couple tower shots. TP's in from the Sand King as well as the Puck being forced to handle this 5-manning. Not 5-manning though. They've got both support players in the jungle. No! There's the Puck ultimate. They want to go in on this Chaos Knight. There's the Sun Strike. Means Puck's going to get bursted down and now Sand King has to back away. Puck Chaos Knight can't really chase. He doesn't have any mana. Does have the power treads up though switched up to Int, so he will get some more mana in the near future. He's got a little enough for a Reality Rift, at least. Sin King and Shadow Demon are here. Livestreamer continuing to free farm top lane. He's up to 600 gold as well as finishing his treads after 8 minutes. So he could get very scary very quickly. Possibly go for an armlet for bigger mi mid-game effectiveness. But in the meantime, he's losing a lot of his towers. Mid lane continuing to get push out. Prophet deciding to jungle instead of go help them push, which, I mean, he's very close to finishing his treads. I kind of understand it. But at the same time, he could be helping out significantly more um, pushing this lane. That possibly could have caused that to go down successfully. 
Invoker now level 7 with his level 2 Invoke coming towards the mid lane. Got a Sun Strike as well as a Cold Snap. Dodges Cast Light uses the ultimate, taking a very early point into it. Shadow even going to disrupt himself. Possibly trying to dodge the stun that didn't come. Gets the deny with those illusions. Very well played by him. And now there's going to be a big conglomeration of units in the mid lane. Puck wants to go. She's got an ultimate in 8 seconds. Wants to take this fight. Cast Knight might be a little bit out of position here. No, not. He's going to be able to sneak back in. And there's a smoke. They smoke up. Want to go up top for the life stealer, and I believe the smoke won't dis get dispelled. They might be able to pull this gank off. It's a very ballsy gank, walking under smoke right past all of the r dire heroes. And the dire heroes back in the mid lane are going to push it out, but they could lose their life stealer, who has been free farming, and he's kind of like their hopes and dreams right now. Could possibly get brought down here. We're going to see. He's got. He's at the tower. This is exactly the worst possible spot. Cold snap. Rage TP should be able to get out just fine. Not going to be enough. Mid lane, though. Tower getting brought down. Should fall. Yep, there it, there it goes. Tower falls. And now, meantime, though, Nature's Prophet is just farming away absolutely consistently up to treads and 600 gold. So we'll have to see what item he decides to go for. He's got a lot of options open to him. He can go for something along the lines of a straight-up pushing build. He's going to go ahead and ult just to continue pushing, not burst down the creep wave a little quicker. And this split push is going to become insanely rough for the Dire to heal to deal with. It looks like what the Radiant wants to do is just have co Prophet constantly somewhere else split pushing, never with the team as the rest of the team four mans, and they've got a very strong four man lineup. Chaos Knight, excellent for this strat. He's got a finished drum now. Ten minute drum tread. Pretty good farm on him. Lena as well with that ultimate and the stuns. Visage with the familiars is going to be absolutely critical to team fight control. And I mean you've got Invoker who's the team who's the king of the mid game team fight as well as transitioning extremely well into the late game. So, very, this is a good strategy. I like this. We're going to have to see how it pans out coming into the mid game as uh, Sunstrike used <laughs> just to kind of annoy the puck up here on the top lane. She's got an illusion and she's fine. She's going to go ahead and burst down the creep wave and then go ahead and use it. Then on the bottom lane, Lifestyle continues to farm over here. going to buy a TP scroll. Yeah. Now he's got most of his armlet. It does look like what he's going for, unless he's going straight for a Maelstrom. That is another option for considering. He's got Glove of Haste, so I'm guessing that is supposed to be an armlet, as that would make sense. He life so typically builds an early game item like that, but hasn't built one yet. Top Tower getting pushed in by the Puck. Meanwhile, Nature's Prophet continuing to farm the jungle up to Treads as well as Midas. 1,400 gold up on him. Have to see what he goes for first. Might rush a Sheepstick. I'd be totally okay with rushing a Dagon. Probably won't happen. People, m most people don't play like I do. Sheepstick probably going to be the best item that he can pick up here to lock down the pucks, lock down the darks here, lock down the live silo. Smoke up into the mid lane, looking to gank these two supporters. Going to run straight into the Shadow Demon. He's just going to get absolutely annihilated. Visage level 6 got those familiars up, and now it looks like they're going to be able to push out the mid lane potentially. Bottom lane, Life Stealer looking to go in on this very low HP Nature's Prophet. Going to be a question of whether he can burst him down before the TP gets off, as Life Stealer does not have a means of stopping the TP. No, Nature's Prophet going to TP back to the mid lane and just prevent the push. Prevent the tier 2 tower from taking damage. Has his ultimate up, probably will go back to base and then use that as soon as he has a vision of all the creep waves. Up on the top lane, looks like Puck is going to get ganked here. Visage, basically max move speed rolling through here. There's a soul assumption as well. Visage continuing to give chase. Uh, Grave Chill is back up, but he's not going to use it. Instead, backing off. Right clicking down. Chaos Knight in the meantime gets a kill against the Shadow Demon again. Shadow Demon have such a difficult time. 0 and 3. And now it looks like they want to push this tier 1 mid. I'm sorry, top. Got four heroes up here. Puck is in the area. Might be able to slow them down. I Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, it looks like Life Stealer as well as Dark Seer are going to be able to pick off this bottom tower. Life Stealer probably going to get the last hit here on this tower. Yep, there it goes. And he is going straight for the M Maelstrom. Going attack speed, Cleep querying. It makes sense against the Nature's Prophet. Big TP's up to the top lane. Cast Knight jumping in. Gets dodged, not able to stun. Now there's the Shattered Demon getting bursted down by the Cold Snap. He looks like he will fall. A couple more right clicks. Gonna do the trick. He's gonna go down. But in the meantime, Invoker falls to the Life Stealer. And Shattered Demon picks off the Chaos Knight. So now it's a big. Now the Radiant having to back off. Visage gonna TP out. Can he make it out in time? No, the stun goes through. He will fall here. Ought to die. No, they don't know he was there. They didn't get vision. Now they're gonna find him. They're gonna right click him. Life Stealer gets the kill there. Lena sitting here to defend out the push. Meanwhile, Nature's Prophet, who wasn't even there at all, 
heads back to the bottom lane, continuing to right click. He's going for an Agonim Scepter just to keep the creep waves pushed out and always have the availability of going to split push. Right now, the waves aren't pushed out enough for him to go and TP somewhere, so he wants to make sure that that all the lanes are pushed, and Agonim Scepter on Profit does that. It's going to ult, should bounce the damage around the team fight up on the top lane. Last is going to finish off Lina, but Chaos Light comes in and gets a kill on the Sand King. Now he gets Alacrity up on him as well. Puck, can he get pulled back? Reality Rift on cooldown. Here's a stun going on the Dark Seer instead. Four second stun. Puck throws in an orb, but it's not going to be enough to slow this down. Reality Rift, Invoker gets the last hit, so that's another kill going the way of the Radiant. Up 10 and 7. Let's look, take a look at the XP and gold graphs. Dire experience advantage as well as gold advantage after that last team fight, so they're still winning in terms of that. However, kill graph is definitely in the favor of the Radiant, and they've got a pretty good... Yeah, they've got a fairly good level advantage. Lina is hurting for levels, but... Prophet and Chaos Knight, the important heroes, do have a lot. Chaos Knight going for an armlet next, it appears, unless he's getting a Helm of the Dominator. Up on the top lane, we're seeing a push going on the top tier 1 tower. Looks like TP's in from the Dire, though. They want to defend this. Shattered Demon and Sand King TP in. What's Sand King? He's level 7, has that ultimate, as well as Arcane Boots. No blink just of yet. He's about, he's a long way off from that. Hopefully he'll get some space to farm here. Shattered Demon has just bare boots. He's been the ward, but allowing Sand King to get the secondary farm as the support. And TP coming in from Darkseer as well, who has a hood. He's going straight for that pipe to prevent Invoker and Lena nuke damage. Good decision on his part. We're going back to the jungle, continuing to try and get that axe stick up. He is only 600 gold away from it. He's going to have that extremely soon, within the next three minutes. So, Midas Ag, Tread Profit, very early on, using that ultimate to push back creep waves and prevent the pushes. Also helping top push out as the dire heroes. A massive engagement. Sand King going to get a double kill on the Visage and the Invoker. Just with that ultimate. Oh, Shadow Demon getting so low. The Visage familiars might be able to pick him off. No, that they've got too much follow up here. Oh, oh, Ode comes in though. Gets a stun. Pulls the Sand King back in. Sand King misses the stun. Does get the Lina. Lina throwing the Dragon Slave. There's this Shadow Demon ultimate on the. Chaos Knight, he's not going to be able to survive. He is going to go down, but, but not before he gets the kill on the Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon ultimate getting the kill there. Lina should go down here to the Sand King. No. Wand Charge keeps her alive, and now we see a TP back in from the Visage, who is back alive. Has some familiar somewhere. Grave Chill. Ultimate used on the Sand King. That might not be who she wanted to target. All of them are low, but here comes the Puck. No. Sunstrike going to miss. Puck finishing off the Lina. Now it looks like Visage will go down. Now it's Visage getting killed by the Dire. Invoker comes in. He's going to cold snap the Puck with the Illusion. With the Familiar. Might be able to bring this Puck down. Uses the ultimate Puck. Invoker doesn't have another spell. His Invoke is on cooldown. He's going to go ahead and proc the stun. Visage Familiar continuing to chase the Puck, but out of damage. Not going to be able to do much. Down in the bottom lane, we see Chaos Knight forcing the Lifestealer to run away. And continuing to right-click out some farm of his own. Only 53 last hits up on him. Not a lot of last hits. However, if we take a look at his gold per minute, we do see that he's up to 334. And besides, Prophet's the one who's really farming on the Radiant team. Getting nice and fat here. Has the ag, pretty little ag stack finished. And go up top lane and push this out. And with that, with that ag stick up, if, number one, I think the cooldown is reduced? No, it just increases the damage in the bounces so that it continues to push out the lanes even harder, and that means that this Nature's Prophet is going to be able to split push all the time. Whenever there's a team fight going on, he's going to be able to TP somewhere, and he's going to go ahead and back off as Darkseer comes in, tries to burst down this creep wave, slow down the push. Meanwhile, Dark Shadow Demon went down in the mid lane, got picked off by the Invoker, so I apologize for missing that. Now, it looks like Nature's Prophet going to come back into the jungle here, farming it up a little bit more using those trains to farm. He's gone ahead and max trains and teleport, so for split pushing build, straight up split pushing. He doesn't want to team fight, doesn't want to gank with the sprout. He's just here to be annoying. I mean, on the bottom lane, Kessler continues his farm, he wants to finish out this arm lane. He's only about 500 gold short of it, so should get that in the very near future. Lifestealer gets the top tier one tower, and he's going to continue right clicking down this creep wave. He's got a maelstrom up, as, is that going to be a, no, it's got to be a desolator. I don't see why he would get a BKB, he doesn't need one this game. Lena's sitting very low. Where is she? She's going back to base. Meanwhile, TP in from the Nature's Prophet, trying to bring down this Life Stealer. He's going to rage in TP. Should be able to make it out. There's nothing to cancel his TP. 
even if he didn't rage. But here comes the rest of the Dire team smoked up. They're going to come into this jungle. Puck blinks in with the ultimate silence as well. Nature's Prophet got to burst him down before he teleports. Wall is used already. Sand King stunning in. Weaver trying to make it out. He should go down here. No, he's got a lot of move speed. He's going to try and sprout TP and, in fact, is going to make it away. No kill. In fact, no, he does go down to the Shadow Demon. He does not TP out. Died at the last possible second. Sand King goes down. Massive team fight breaking out. Invoker comes in. Gonna throw some spells in. Looks like the Shadow Demon is gonna be the next one coming in. Puck is low. Jump back in onto the sh Dark Seer. He's so low. One more right click is all that he needs. He goes the wrong direction. He's gonna be able to TP out just fine. And now Puck up onto the high ground. No vision means she gets out as well. So in the end, two for two trade. As well as a Life Stealer Force TP. So nothing really too bad. I think Life Stealer buy back to go farm. I don't think he did. Came in here. He's gonna go ahead and minus up this creep. He's getting a lot of farm up. It does look like he's going for the Desolator. Forget going for it. He has the Desolator. So using that armor reduction for more damage, more team, more right click. Then probably going to go ahead and finish out the Mjolnir for right click speed. And then maybe get a Basher or something like that. To go through the BKB if Chaos Knight decides to build one. No indication that he will yet. He does have an armlet up though. And now it looks like Sand King wants to stun. Going to just barely get the Visage on the edge of that stun. But he's going to get bursted down for his trouble. Visage getting the kill there. Now it looks like Darkseer getting burst down as well. Puck ult used. Puck should be able to get the Visage. Does pick him off. And now Puck though. Yeah, Lifestealer in the bottom picks off the picks off the Nature's Prophet as well. So across the map, two for two. Now it looks like chasing the Puck. Oh no, Puck coming in aggressively. Wants to pick off Node. Will not be able to pick off the Chaos Knight. He can go ahead and toggle his armlet. He'll be able to make it out just fine. Down on the bottom lane, Visage Familiar is headed down just to slow down the life sealer, slow down the push a little bit, right click a little bit. Those things do a lot of damage. You do have two stacks of bonus damage up. In fact, there's alacrity on one of them. Gonna go ahead and stun. Stun as well. He's gonna grave TP once again. Make it out alive. And that's gonna be the end of the gank of him. These guys need to come up with a way to cancel that rage TP. I mean, if it means buying a basher on your Chaos Knight just to cancel that rage TP, and you gotta do it, man. Because that's gonna be annoying them for the rest of the game. They're not gonna be able to stop that any other way. Weaver continuing to farm here. Got his axe. Oh, he's got 1300 gold up. Any items on the courier? No. I assume he's gonna go for sheepstick next. It's probably his best option. Just sheep the life. Oh! Gets fogged on that reality rift. Gonna go ahead and bring it back in now. The stun followed up as well. Three seconds stun. Hits the illusion though. Doesn't know which one is real, and Shadow Demon gonna make it out now. TP to the TP. No, TP'd up to the wrong spot. Didn't guess where the Shadow Demon was gonna go. Now it looks like Life Stealer is gonna go in onto the Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight should go down here. Pops the ultimate. Might be able to make it out, but Sand King ult's gonna be too much. Gonna stun in as well. Lena goes ahead and ults, brings down the Sand King. Pipe blocks most of that damage. Looks like the Visors is gonna go down to the Dark Seer, and now Weaver gets brought in. Ought to be able to make it out. Yeah, he's gonna be able to. No! The Puck Orb comes off, cooldown at the exactly the right time, Invoker the last one alive, Force Staffing himself out, ought to be able to make it out, running away, Life Stealer right behind him, gets surged, no, he's gonna go down, he's gonna get caught underneath the tower, no chance, gets killed, Team Wipe for the Dire. I remember that one from some time long past. Puck remembers it, alright. And with this, they're gonna be able to push out this mid-tier 2 tower, probably. They got 10 seconds to Chaos Knight, 20 seconds to Nature's Prophet. So might be enough to do some serious pushing here. Lifestealer attacking pretty hard. He's got, en he's got enough gold now for his Hyperstone. He's done farming. I mean, he's going to go team fight now. Chaos Knight TP's right in. Going to be able to burst down the Darkseer. Darkseer does get a wall off. And now Chaos Knight getting low again. Going to get bursted down by this unstoppable Lifestealer. Wall doing too much damage as well, and they're going to just clear out the creep wave. Tower goes down as well, so a big mistake there from the Chaos Knight. Dying like that does pick off the Darkseer, but doesn't get enough in exchange. Trading his own life, not a good practice. You shouldn't throw away your life like that, man. There's so much to live for. Life Sealer is right-clicking so hard right now. 200 damage with the Midas attack speed as well as the Maelstrom attack speed. And he's probably going to go ahead and pick up the... Oh man, he's one-shotting those, whatever they are. What are these? These are Dark Troll Summoners and Wildwing Ripers. Rippers? I've got no clue what the hell they're calling these things now. He's going to continue to farm it up. Doesn't No, he's not on farming yet. Just going to continue in the jungle for a little while here. 
Oh, Nature's Prophet knows someone's in the jungle. He's going to get caught out by the Life Stealer. He's going to try and spy himself, but the Quelling Blade is there. He's going to get bursted down. Life Stealer is chasing. Puck Ultimate used. Life Stealer going to be able to finish off the Nature's Prophet. Uh, Lena Ultimate used on the Puck. Puck is so low, but Life Stealer just going to work. Chaos Light comes in, does finish off the Puck, and now Chaos Light's getting chased in. Does Reality Rift in on a Shadow Demon Illusion just to move out. Chaos Meteor used, not going to be enough damage. Now Chaos Light trying to get out. Pops his ultimate. Three seconds left on the Life Stealer. That might be enough to bring him down. It is. Lena does end up getting the killer on the Life Stealer. Four step forward, chasing the Shadow Demon. He's going to get cold snapped. Oh, self disruption. Can he get out? Dark Seer's coming in. Vacuum up onto the high ground. No, not quick enough on it. Going to get stunned up instead. Now he's going to get right click. Vacuum ineffective. Goes down. Shadow Demon buys back. TP in. Life Stealer bought back as well. Headed back into the mix. Maybe thinking that the Radiant wanted to roast, but they're not going to. Now it looks like Vam going to head up to the top lane, pick up an invisibility rune up here. He needs to finish off his sheepstick or another mana item. He is having some mana problems. He also needs some levels. Ag stick. I mean, he just needs everything. Invoker needs so much fun. On the top lane, Weaver continue from. He's getting a shadow blade. It's a familiar thing. It's going to give him some more escape ability. He's only a couple hundred gold away from that. He's going to go ahead and back off as the rest of the Dire Heroes are rotating in. Didn't have the vision, but just had a good guess. Going to try and jungle. That might be a mistake. Dire Heroes are headed this way. No, he should be fine. Life Sealer's headed into the jungle, though. Nah, he's just going to TB out. He's fine. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Visage continuing to farm up. Visage might want a Naganum Scepter. No, he's... He's got a mech and a ring of Basilius. Might be going for a Vlad's there. Looks like Chaos Knight picking, is picking up that Basher just to cancel the rage. I mean, it's a decent item on the Chaos Knight. Doesn't buff his illusions at all. Does the, give them a little bit of strength. But, I mean, other than that, not helping his illusions. It does give his hero a good chunk of crit damage. As his crits are... The hero's crits will get improved by this Javelin. However, the, the illusion crits will not. And the illusions will also not bash. However, it will be enough to just have his hero bashing on the life stealer. He's going to find himself a double damager and pick that one up. But the rest of the dire hero is coming in. They know he's here. We've got Shadow Demon coming in. He's going to get seen. Vamp. He's going to go ahead and pick it up. Gets his reality rift canceled. Vamp force stash himself in to help out. Oda's getting low. He's going to get four seconds stunned, though. Shadow Demon gets massively annihilated. Sand King ult comes in. That's going to pick off the Chaos Knight as well as possibly the Invoker. Invoker low. He's going to be able to make it out. Invoke cooling down in three. Puck coming in, doing work, silencing up the Visage. Visage going to get low. Burst it down. Nature's Prophet cancels his TP. Visage so tanky, though. Not going down. Vamp in position. Can't do anything. No levels of Wex for Tornado. Just has a Sun Strike looking to get a follow-up kill, it looks like. Darkseer wants to chase, chasing out the Visage from maybe? maybe? No. Not going to be able to chase those up. Oh, this Invoker picking off Sand King with that Sun Strike. Max that Max Exhort on this Invoker doing work. Meantime, Familiar is just scouting out, looking for the Life Stealer. Who is in the jungle? Let's see if he picked up another item. He did pick up a Skull Basher and still has enough for a Hyperstone. Man, this guy's GPM is insane. 600 GPM life stealer. Chase the familiars away. Meanwhile, it looks like the Dyer headed into the jungle. They can find Lena here. She's going to TP out. She saw them coming, maybe, and is going to make it out safely. And now it's just Nature's Prophet up on the top lane. Has the ultimate up as well to bounce some damage around this team fight. Probably going to use it as soon as he sees this creep wave. Or in the near future. As the team fight is breaking out on the bottom lane, we see Puck ult. Puck Orb getting used. Now we see Visage sitting here as well. Only level 10, not level 2 familiars yet. So they're not as fast as they can be and they don't have enough HP. Have no armor as well. The familiars getting some stuns up, allowing Chaos Knight to get into position. Reality Rift back on the Dark Seer. Two second stun only, but there's going to be a follow up stun. Blink in from the Sand King as well as the Life Sealer jumping in with him. Going to burst down the Lena immediately. Chaos Knight going to work, right clicking. Life Stealer dodges the Deafening Blast with the Rage, and now it looks like two for one so far. Vamp getting chased pretty hardcore. Might be able to make it out here. Gets stunned up by the Life Stealer. Not enough move speed. Looks like the Dark Seer is going to go fall down to the Visage, though. Now it looks like Visage going to get brought down. Lucky Bash picking him off. Buy back from the Lena. Not soon enough. Ultra Kill up onto the Life Stealer, and now it looks like this. Sh 
this Nature's Prophet wants to pick off the Shadow Demon, will be able to, and now it's just Life Stealer. Nature's Prophet is here. Stun's coming in. Nature's Life Stealer getting stunned up. He's Visage of Familiar is doing some work, but not enough mana on the Nature's Prophet. Not enough. Does have Liam does have the ultimate. <laughs> Shadow Demon laughing. See went down there. Sam King coming back in. I believe no, he didn't. He's picking up an ag stick now. Got the blink up. Has had it for a while. And now familiar backing off. Got all six 84 bonus damage up. He's doing a lot of damage on this first right click here. Able to burst do some damage. Um, TP's in to defend this tower. Continued TP's. Nature's Prophet gonna go split push top. Pull in on three seconds stun. No, dodged by the blink. Gets pulled back in though. He's gonna die here. Visage stun. Familiar stun. No blink dodges. Gonna get brought down by Alina wave. And now Life Stealer forced to run away. Up on the top lane, Nature's Prophet pushing out. Just a Shadow Demon there to defend against him, and he's not gonna bother pushing too hard against that. He's got 3k gold up. Might start going for a sheep stick in the near future. He's TPing to the secret shop. What's he gonna pick up? It's probably gonna be the sheep stick, I assume. Yeah, gonna be a sheep stick. Finds an invis rune as well. No, not gonna get there before the puck does. Who gets it first? Nature's Prophet. By like a split second, getting chased by the puck. Puck just doing some damage. Gonna get followed. Nature's Prophet has invisibility anyway. Who cares? He's got the Shadow Blade invis. OP strat. Gonna use. He can teleport while still invisible. I like this. Come to me. I didn't realize that. Teleport under invisibility. Started even coming in. Chasing up the Invoker. They're coming in, looking for vision. Dark's here looking for a vacuum back in. He's just going to go try and find some jungle creeps, but there aren't any there. Life Seer going to solo the Roshan with an Abysmal Blade and the Maelstrom and the Desolator. He's going to be able to bring this thing down really quickly. Got tons of right click power. Hitting for 300 a pop. Gets an Aegis, and now that's going to be a lot of power for the Dire to use coming up in the near in the future team fights. Visor's Familiar is pushing out the lanes. Putting some pressure on the bottom tier 2 tower, but now it's going to get defended by Lifestealer. And not going to be able to defend that anymore. There's Courier response. I didn't notice it dying. Puck sitting here down on the bottom lane, going to get scouted out by Familiars. Familiars do not have a lot of sight range, though. Very, very low range on them. And we're going to see Chaos Knight continuing to farm it out. He's got his Basher. Needs another big item. Nothing on the Courier for him. He's really falling behind in terms of net worth. Net worth. Yeah, he's way behind. Nature's Prophet's getting close to the Life Stealer, but Life Stealer is completely on top here. Prophet continuing to split push out. The whole Dire team is bottom, so he's going to be able to take this tower if he wants to ult and do some damage down to the... Yeah, he's going to go ahead and do that. Aw, oh, bursting down Pucked almost half HP in the process. This tower is going to fall. Vamp is here using Alacrity on himself. I mean, it's level 2 wax. It's not a lot of attack speed. It is a lot of damage, though. That will bring down the tower. Meanwhile, the bottom tier 2 tower falls as well. And mid lane now getting pushed out by Visage Familiars, doing the best that they can. Not a lot of damage coming from them, but Nature's Prophet's going to come in, grab a jungle creep with his Midas, and go ahead, pop some treants. Now, Chaos Knight does get a kill against the Sand King bottom, against the whole dire team. Pretty impressive. He is going to get first down by the Live Stealer, though, jumping in on the puck. And now it's Lena who's going to get brought down as well. Unstoppable spree. Chaos Knight by his back. And now it might come have to TP back to the bottom. Here comes a massive meteor coming through. That's a heavy damage meteor. Look at it bursting down the Shadow Demon. A sad face on the Sand King. Oh, that Sun Strike getting the puck so low. Can we get anything? Smoke back up just for the extra move speed. And running away, Puck should be able to get out here. Bring back onto the Darkseer. He will end up paying the price. He's going to go down. TP in for the Nature's Prophet as well. Life Sealer is here with Abysmal Blade. He's got Recipe Mjolnir up. He's going to finish Mjolnir. He's going to go in on the Weaver. Weaver missing completely. He's going to get a kill here. Now the TP on the Rage just going to get out. Unable to get in there with the Basher to get a lucky stop on that TP. Now in the meantime, Puck's sitting here in the middle. He's got a Blink as well as a Drum. 4,500 gold, so might start going for a Sheep Stick in the near future. Prophet very close to his sheep stick. He's only 400 gold shy of it. So that sheep stick gonna make it a lot easier for him to survive as well as do some damage in these team fights. Sen King continuing to farm, trying to finish up that veil. He's getting extremely close, just a couple 
just a couple hundred gold away from that down the bottom lane. See Vamp continuing to farm it out, going for the Agonim Scepter once that cooldown in one level, and in about 300 gold he will have a zero second cooldown invoke. A zero, I'm sorry, it's like a two second cooldown in two C invoke as well as zero mana cost, so it's gonna help him out a lot in terms of contributing to these team fights. He's gonna continue farming, he's almost got it, he's so close. Only a fifty gold away from that. Meanwhile, top lane getting pushed out by the dire Sand King coming in here. He's got his finished veil up, so it's gonna increase the magical damage by a significant amount. Puck getting close to that. No, going for the Shiva instead of the Sheep. Just wants some armor up against this Chaos Knight and the very right click heavy lineup from the Radiant. Oh, it looks like Shattered Demon's gonna find the Chaos Knight. I heard a stun. Oh, that's just Sand King running away. Getting into a position. Life Stealer comes in. He's gonna find this. Is there, is there vision? Is there detection? No, I don't think there's detection. They don't know that light, that Nature's Prophet was there. I'm still jumping into the puck. That's going to be their initiation. Waiting for an opportunity for the Radiant to show themselves. They're being very careful. Nature's Prophet just going to say, screw this. I'm going to go split push. And I can do that because I'm Nature's Prophet. Screw you. Who wants a team when I can do this? And if Volker does get his Ag Stick, they're going to burst down this tower here. Then this is going to be probably the last two towers. Ult gets used. This is going to bounce through the top lane. Pipe going to negate a lot of the damage, though. And now it's going to be bringing down the top, bottom 2-2 two -two tower. So 2-2 two -two for 2-2 two -two trade. That's what Nature's Prophet does best. He's got a finished Sheep Stick as well as 1,000 gold up. Now the fight's going down on the mid lane. Looks like Shattered Demon's going to get picked off. Invoker's go doing tons of damage as well. Sand King Ultimate just used on the Chaos Knight, but he's tank. Brings down the Sand King in result. Three seconds stun onto this Dark Seer. He's going to fall as well. Life Stealer died, coming back to life now. He's going to. Sheep gets sheeped up, gets sprouted up, and he gets brought down in the end finally. Wicked Six Streak finished. I think that's his first death this game. No, it's his second. He did go down one time earlier. Buys back. TP's in to defend top lane. Weaver goes in Viz. Gets slowed, but Life Stealer doesn't have detection. Weaver will be able to make it away just fine here. Gonna have an ult in a second. I had insult to injury there. Insult to injury. Go. It's a lot of damage. Felix, however, is still pretty farmed. Desolator, Abysmal, Mjolnir. He's probably... I don't know what item he even goes. You go for next on Life Stealer. Puck, though, picking off the Nature's Prophet on the top lane. Gonna fall to the Invoker in the meantime, though. Invoker got the, that ag up now, so he's got that two-second cooldown on Invoke. Meaning he can cast spells so quickly for no mana. It's going to massively increase his uh, teamfight effectiveness. Visage farming out the jungle. Got a Ghost Scepter up to prevent getting bursted down by the Lifestealer. Farming out the enemy jungle is a pretty clever move. Got those flying units familiars coming to help him out. A lot of sentry wards up by the Dire scouting out radiant movement. Looks like they're going to go and try and protect the Roshan here. They've got a sentry ward up. Going to use it to bring down this radiant ward. So dewarding all the time. Going to probably prop a very aggressive jungle ward here. Dire looking to push in in the near future. Chaos Knight, although he's not very far, and the rest of his team is. 3,000 gold up on him. Dude, if you turned off your armlet, you would regen health faster. I'm, I'm just saying. Oh, uh, what's going on here? Oh, he DCs. Okay, that makes more sense. I was like, um... Let's speed through this pause. There we go. And he reconnects. Pug disconnects as well, so we're going to have to wait a little bit longer. I wonder if this game is so long. It's not gameplay long. It's all these freaking pauses. In the middle here, we're going to see some pushing. Dire, dire pushing in, keeping the lanes pushed out as much as they can. I mean, it's just pretty impressive, considering you're up against an Agonim Scepter, Nature's Prophet. If you can't push out lanes with an Ag Stick Fury, and then you just can't push out lanes at all. And, I mean, you do look at the gold graph and experience graph. The Dire have an advantage. There's only a 5k advantage for now. Only a 5k experience advantage, actually. It's getting a lot closer. Here goes the Prophet Ult. Going to bounce around. 
push out all the creep waves, continue to get him like an obscene amount of farm. 294 last hits on him, which is not as much as the Life Stealer. Life Stealer farming like a pro, farming like a champion, going in on the Ancients now. To see what item he goes for next, he's got a couple options. Hallward might be nice to prevent some of the right click damage. Um, he's got the Abysmal Blade. I mean, he already sold his Midas. I don't know what to go for. Oh, picks off the Visage Familiar, <laughs> which the stun still goes off anyway. Chaos Knight coming into farm. Ain't coming into farm. No, he's not gonna farm the agents. He's gonna go ahead and head back. He's got an illusion rune here. These are illusion runes and not uh, phantasms. So, Chaos Knight with an abysmal blade of his own now to prevent that rage TP and to shut down the life stealer in the team fight. It's the only hero that it's the only way they have of locking him down. It'll be for a good one, two seconds. We'll allow the CK some time. He needs to go. He's now he's got that abysmal blade. I think he needs to go for a heart. Get some more. He's got to have the crit damage. His crits are probably huge. I haven't seen one yet. We'll have to wait and see. Visage coming up. Push coming out on the top lane a little bit. Prophet sitting here invisible, but there is a sentry ward right on top of him. He's going to TP into the team fight as there is a team fight breaking out around the Roche pit. Meteor's going to come in and miss. Going to do a little bit of damage to the Shadow Demon. He's going to get cold snapped and brought down immediately. Vacuum wall with a Stand King ultimate as well, but Chaos Knight dodges most of it. He's really tanky. Losing a lot of HP. Now it's Life Sealer going in onto Weaver. He's going to get brought down. Chaos Knight trying to right click, but this Life Sealer doing too much work. Two for three so far. The rest of the Radiant backing off as Life Sealer coming in with a vengeance. Puck jumping in, trying to get forward into range. He's got a Deafening Blast queued up. We'll be able to knock them back, so he should be fine. Yeah, he's going to be fine. Oh, he's got the Dark Seer Illusion here. Alright, Nature's Prophet Illusion doing a lot of damage. Does a lot. Nature's Prophet. Alright. So, big team fight. And I gotta say that kind of favors the Dire. His life is getting bigger and bigger. He's now got 5k gold. Can buy a heart if he wants to. That's an item. That's an option. He's already got an, two orb effects, so he can't get another orb effect. He's going to go to the secret shot. No, he's going to go straight into Roche, actually. He's going to solo up the Roche on, and he's just going to bring Roche down so quickly. Unless he gets bashed to death. That's always a possibility. going to need a Demon Edge, so going for the Monkey King bar, possibly, or crits are another option, just to up his physical DPS. You're getting stunned up. Roche bashing like a boss here. Let's go ahead and check farm out on some of these other heroes. Vamp working his way towards the Sheep Stick. 3k gold up on him. Visage Familiar scouting out the Aegis. No Aegis snipe. They tried. Go ahead and stun off the Sand King, though. Oh, let's see here. Visage rolling through. He's got a mech up as well as a cloak just to keep from taking too much damage from these spells. Possibly working towards a pipe. Oat sitting pretty high up. He's got, f he's got no new items yet. Only 500 gold since he finished the Abysmal. Lena... Ghost Scepter as well as a Bracer just for some HP. So just to prevent from getting bursted down by the Life Stealer. Nature's Prophet up on the top lane pushing it out. He's got no new items. 3.7k 3. gold though. He's got a lot. He's going to be able to right click down this wave very quickly. And continue the split pushing. Meanwhile, looks like Dyer wants to push mid with this Aegis. Vacuum attempted to use to pull someone down to the low ground. Not successfully though. So... No push just yet. Ward gets pushed. I believe that Cast Knight saw the ward go down. Standing right next to it. Here comes the creep wave bursting down. Vamp going to be in position to bur counter burst. There's a Puck ultimate jumping in with the live stealer, but Puck's going to get burst down immediately. And Darkseer as well chasing Melina, but the Ghost Scepter too much. Ghost Scepter going to keep them alive, and now Life Stealer drops the Aegis, Shadow Demon gonna fall, 3 dead already, Sand King running away, Life Stealer running away, question is, can he make it out? Why is it dropping the wrong familiar, Sand King stunning away, looks like Darkseer gonna buy back, and now Nature's Prophet taking down a tier 3 tower, summoning more treants, and he's just gonna back off, he can even, if he wants to, go in, get a kill, no, not gonna be able to get a kill on the Sand King, Sand King low, but not that low, tries to right click, stun strike! That's a kill. <laughs>
Smoker on the mega kill streak. Coming back up the mid lane, got that two second cooldown invoke. 4,000 gold as well, can go for a sheep stick in the near future if he wants it. Nature's Prophet in the jungle might run into the life stealer. Is going to land the life stealer. Life stealer going to go in. Nature's Prophet just invises and says, screw you. And now here comes the invoker too. They might try and chase this life stealer. There's a sprout coming in. Cold snap. Anything, no deafening blast, but it's going to get dodged. Chaos Light in here as well. Vacuum in. Everybody gets vacuumed, but going to use the Abysmal Blade. Stun. Life stealer is going to get brought down. He's dead. I believe he has buyback. No, 937. Not enough for buyback. This is going to mean a Rax for sure. 100 seconds down, and that could even be two Rax as the mid lane is pushed out. Massive pick off in the jungle there. Alacrity used on the Visage Familiar. Continuing to give it more attack speed, and now they're going to rotate towards the mid lane. Push this one out. They've got the creeps disabling backdoor protection. It's going to be a lot of right clicking down. I heard a reality rift, but it's going to get fogged. Trance going in, trying to take down the base towers as well. Blink in from the puck, going to get a four-man ultimate. Silence as well. Dodging, going to blink right back out. Wall used. Vacuum into the wall. So big team fight coming out from the dire. No life stealer though. The question is, do they have enough to stop this push? Puck going to get so low. Face shifting, going to try to make it out. Jumping away, trying to finish off this Visage. Shadow Demon jumping in. Should be able to get the Lena here. Yeah, Lena will go down. Visage still alive. No, going to get slowed down. Oh, got that Grave Chill, keeping him quick. Stun from the Chaos Line. He's just going to get a 1300 damage crit to one hit that Sand King. And now Vacuum going to miss. Pump blink, Puck blinking in, trying to catch out the Visage, but it's not going to be enough. The tier, two mi tier 3 mid goes down. Okay. Sand King buys back to defend. Dark Tier does finish off the Chaos Knight, but Puck might go down here. Vamp looking to get a kill here. Blink away. And Visage survives, and Dark Tier going to fall with one more right click. Visage survives. Puck trying to get away. Sand King here to defend. Blinks forward, going to stun up the Invoker and just get away. Invoker out of gold. 5k. I'm sorry, he's out of mana. He's got 5k gold. Meanwhile, Nature's Prophet comes in. He's going to have to invis away. No vision again on the Lifestealer. Although he has a Monkey King bar, he's not going to be able to prevent this Nature's Prophet from getting out. Chaos Knight did go down there, but I mean, they got a Rax and a Tier 3 Tower through that whole exchange. Vamp is going to go for that Invoker. He's got Sunstrike up. Look, has to be looking to Sunstrike somebody. Who would be looking to Sunstrike? No one's low. I don't see anyone. Anyway, he's got it up. Visage making it a long way back. Has a finish pipe in the base. So that's going to help out the team in terms of magic reduction, magic damage reduction, shortening the effectiveness of that Sand King ult. For this one last final push that they'll be doing. Nature's Prophet, has he gotten a new item? He's got double damage and he has an Abysmal Blade as well. So he's bashing and also has the ability to stun up the life stealer. He's got a double damage and he's hitting really hard right now. So he's also got a lot of attack speed too. Maybe he can get a Mjolnir too here just to increase his attack speed and maybe actually proc some bashes. I don't know. Sheepstick finish on the invoker so he's gonna have a lot more mana now as well as another disable. Life stealer on the bottom lane trying to push it out. No new big item on him. He's got 2200 gold so he's gonna have to sell out his tread, swap them for bots and pick up some other item. You can get a heart maybe for some increased tankiness. He's got a couple options open to him. AC is another one. See the Dark Sears items. He's got a pipe as well as a as well as that ultimate orb. Really not farming on him. Puck has the sheep stick as well as an ultimate orb. To, I'm sorry, she's got the shivas as well as an ultimate orb to go for the sheep stick. Puck getting some farm up here as well as the Sand King who has a finished veil possibly going for an ag stick or something but he's not getting a lot of gold shadow demon finally has an arc boots as well as a gem pretty poor on him only level 14 rest of the dire team are smoked up they've got they're going to use the prophet potentially as bait here smoked up coming into the no they're going to go straight in behind they're just going to sit up here visage can spot it out his smoke is dispelled what are they doing they're just hiding up in the trees, waiting for them to come and defend against Prophet and Visage. I don't know what the Dyer are doing. They're smoked up as well. Going to go rotate around the back. And this is going to catch, definitely catch the Nature's Prophet by surprise. A blink in ult. Silence, but here comes a tornado picking everybody up. Meteor as well with the deafening blast bursting down a lot. Fearless getting stunned up. Weaver looks like he's going to get out. Sam King ultimate is used. It's doing damage. Lysir finishes off the Prophet, but Chaos Knight finishes off the Puck. 
Puck buys back. Lena kills two. The Life Stealer and the Dark Seer. Both of them, no, the Dark Seer no buy back, but Life Stealer buys back. Nature's Prophet buys back. TP straight back in. He's going to continue right clicking. Puck trying to right click. Go Ice Wall doing too much. Slowing down this Life Stealer. Life Stealer getting low. He's right clicking though. Finishes off the Chaos Knight, and now Visage getting low. Fam going to get bursted down by the Life Stealer. Visage running away. Grave Chill. Invoker gets. Invoker is dead. Puck jumps forward. Life Stealer gets a killing spree. Finishes him off, and now Nature's Prophet. The only one to make it away, aside from Lena, who also got managed to TP out. She's got an ethereal blade. Holy crap, that's going to do a lot of damage. Want to know how to one-shot a Shadow Demon? <laughs> Get ethereal blade on Lena. So, massive team fight. A win for the Dire as they prevented the push. Life Sealer did use his buyback. It is now on cooldown. But he's got another 2,600 gold. And he's going to continue farming Mike. I mean, he, at this point, he might need to rush get a Divine. Just needs that damage. Nature's Prophet continuing to... D he's getting crits, so that's what Nature's Prophet's getting. He's going to use his ultimate to push out creep waves. That top wave always pushed out. Mid push coming from the Dire. They want to take this. They've got 30 seconds before the rest of the Radiant team is up. These guys, do they have buyback is a question. Chaos Knight does. Visage does as well. So they probably will buy back here. Try to defend the racks. They do have a glyph that they can use. It's going to get used now. Chaos Knight not buying back, choosing to wait it out. And there's the Ethereal Blade. Darkseer getting burst down almost immediately. Stun's going to whiff, though. Looks like Puck going to fall. No, he gets the phase shift off. Might be able to survive here. Life Stealer wanting to go in. Puck, is she going to be able to get out? Soul Assumption dodged. Puck will survive here. No Grave Chill. Defensive Disruption. Might be able to get the Blink cooldown. Phase shift as well. Nature's Prophet going to dodge. No, Puck ends up falling down to the Lena. Now Life Stealer going to pick off the Lena, though. Weaver getting out. Manages to run away. Shadow Demon still with that gem. No, has lost the gem. Oh, no. Life Stealer gets brought down. He has no buyback. 28 seconds. Dark Seer as well. This could very well be at least a Rax, if not GG. Nature's Prophet, as soon as he has TP off cooldown, he's probably going to go bottom. No, cancels the TP. He might get brought down by his own illusion here. <laughs> and Viz is to get away from it. He's going to just right-click it down. Meantime, push going mid lane. Chaos Knight did not use his buyback, so he's the only hero on the map with buyback right now. Has 3,700 gold up, so he will be able to buy back in the near future. Let's check out, I mean, Life Stealer, although he has this massive net worth gain, this lead, he's all not very far ahead of the Prophet, and Chaos Knight is high on the list as well as the Invoker. And look at the Sand King, look at the Darks here. They have nothing, not able to win out these team fights just because there's so much damage coming out of the Radiant. That's the second barracks. They may go for the Mega Creeps now. Yeah, it looks like they will. Should be able to get it as there's another 40 seconds left. And this tower is already at half HP. There is a Glyph, but GG well played. It's going to get called. TP out. Tanking going to try and ult, but he's going to get picked up by the Tornado. He's going to stun in and get a couple waves off, but just going to get bursted down by the Weaver, by the Lena. It's going to be the finish end of the game here. Mega Creeps. Tower is going to fall. Thanks for watching, guys. It's a cool strategy, split pushing done by the Radiant, and it ended up in some epic team fights there at the end of the game, so hopefully it was an enjoyable watch. Last attempted team fight here from the Dire with no Life Stealer is not going to end well, I'm predicting. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to pick off. Yeah, just a lot of pick offs there. Life Stealer jumps in, going to start right clicking, might get a kill. Yeah, going to get a kill on the Invoker, but the throne's going to go down. Mega Creeps are in. He's going to end up falling to the Visage as well as the Nature's Prophet, who's just right-clicking for so hard right now. Ancient's going to fall. GG, well played. Thanks for watching, guys. Like I said, this was European team matchmaking, so hopefully a good game for all of these guys. Hope they enjoyed it, got some skills, so enjoyable. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Kingdom bringing you... Like I said, oh, this is a, like I said, game from European Team Matchmaking. Odin, thanks to Vamp for getting me the replay. If you like the cast, go ahead, follow, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. This is Kingdom signing out. GG's.